everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome, I'm Sefa. Today's video is going to be a flip through of my bullet journal. I'm going to show you all the pages that I've created for the Healy setup. I've already uploaded the plan with me video and I've said in that video that I would have done this one because uh, I think that some spreads needed uh, a few more words than what I've been able to say in my plan with me video. This is the notebook that I'm going to use for my Healy pages. I've decided to put them in a different notebook from my bullet journal, the normal one where I have all my monthly spreads. And that is because uh, I felt the need of having uh, all my Healy pages uh, one after the other. So for example, here I have 2023 and then 2024, and it's perfect because for example, for some spreads, it's important to keep track of them throughout the years, uh, and uh, I thought it was a good idea. As I said, the plan with me video, it's online, so if you want to go and watch it, you can do it. The first thing, it's of course the cover page, and then I have a little pocket where I can put something inside without having like uh, the need of creating a, a page for something. For example, if I'm gonna need a color code, I can put it here. And to do that, I have this A6 paper. I can take one of them, usually I cut away this part here where there are the six holes and then I just create something to put in here. Then there is, uh, let's say, a Healy at a glance, if we want to call it in this way, or a calendar. I've created some stickers, first of all because I was lazy and most of all because I didn't want to write them all by hand. It would have took me forever and most of all, I always do mistakes when I have to write this. Always. So it was better in this way. This is not really like a future log or something like that. It's uh, literally a spread in which I'm gonna write, for example, yes, birthdays or uh, if there is something else uh, important or, for example, if in January I already have a dentist appointment for, let's pretend, May or June, something like that, I can write it here. It's not a real, real future log because uh, I've noticed that I start using it at the beginning of the year, but then I forgot about it. So this could be filled in with stuff or could just end up being this empty. And then there is my I'm a lady tracker. And here is where I keep track of my period. This is extremely easy to use. If I get my period, for example, on the 3rd, I'm just gonna color the 3rd of January and so goes on. Next to the I'm a lady tracker, there is the migrant one. And for me, it's important to have them into pages that are one next to each other. So I can see if one of my migrant attack could be connected with my period or not. I've been suffering with migrants since uh, I was a little girl, so... This is important for me to keep track of. However, this is extremely simple. I'm just gonna color the days in which I have it. And if in one of those days, for example, I'm gonna take a pill or another, I'm just gonna keep track by writing the, the first letter of it. I'm not gonna keep track of anything else because for my migrants, I have a, a notebook that was given to me by the hospital itself where I have to track many things such as uh, how I'm feeling, the pain level, what could be connected, uh, what I felt before I understood that I was dealing with uh, a migraine attack, what I was feeling after, how long it took uh, for the pill to do their work, a lot of things. But here for me, this is uh, enough. I don't need anything more. And these two spreads are identical, for example, to my workout one. And this is because uh, I've used them like this last year and it was perfectly for me, so I don't see why changing anything. Workout tracker. Here I'm gonna keep track of the days in which I work out by coloring them. And this year, probably the difference from last year in my yearly spread for the workout is gonna be that probably in the days in which I'm actually hitting the gym, I'm just gonna write gym or something like that and nothing more. Well, my monthly 
pages uh, I have a workout tracker but in that case I also keep track of which part of my body I've been training here it's extremely simple if the fifth uh, I work out I color it if the sixth I work out at the gym I color it in the right gym it's not complicated last time I this spread is for example important for what I was saying before at the beginning of the video for me to see when it was done the last time also in the previous here because there could be something that I don't do that much and so maybe the last time I've done this was December 2023 and I need to be able to go back and check it out and so this was perfect to have it all here on my yearly pages here what I do is simply writing a few things that usually you don't do daily and you don't do, let's say, constantly, so you only do them once in a while. It's not like, a, oh, I do this thing every three months in the same day, no. And I wanted to keep track of whenever I was doing it. So here there are all the things that I've written so far. I haven't closed the tracker down here because just in case I will have something more to add, I still have a little bit of space. And here there are the months. For example, there is uh, whenever I'm gonna change the ink for my printer. And in this way, there are four different uh, voices here because there's one for the black ink, uh, one for the red and blue and yellow. If, for example, in January I'm gonna change my black ink, I'm just gonna color it and I'm gonna write the date, so just the number. For example, if it's gonna be the 7th, I'm gonna write uh, color the little box and then write 7 in it. In this way, I'm gonna be able to see when I've done it last time. And these things can change, of course, from people to people. For example, if you don't have a car, you for sure will not have cleaning the car and I have it divided into one for the inside and one from the outside because uh, the car always needs, at least mine, to be cleaned up more in the outside. I do that more than clean the inside. And so these are just uh, a few things uh, that I want to keep track. Then it's time for my Instagram and YouTube tracker and then I also have uh, my TikTok one that was a new entry this year. I've done this last year and I've decided to do it again. This time, uh, however, I've added also TikTok because I've been posting a little bit more there as well. What I'm gonna do here is keep track uh, every single month of how many followers I have at the beginning of the month, at the end, how many photos I've posted and how many reels, and then uh, at the end uh, I can see a total, so of course I'm gonna see how many followers I gained in a year or lost, because you can never know how many photos I've posted and reels. The same goes for YouTube, in this case, however, I'm keeping track of subscribers at the beginning and the end of the month, the number of videos that I've actually posted and the number of videos that I was planning to post. For example, January is gonna be a full month, like I have so many ideas for January but I already know I will not be able to post them all in January. So probably the number of videos that I'm gonna actually upload is gonna be lower than the one that I want to do but it's gonna be perfectly fine. Then there's gonna be months in which uh, I, for example, thought, oh, this month I'm gonna only post four videos and then I cause, um, end up uh, doing uh, five or six. So it's not like that important. It's just to have an idea of how things change between what I plan to do and what I've actually done. For TikTok is the number of followers at the beginning and the end of the month. How many TikTok I've posted in that uh, month and how many like I had at the beginning and at the end of the month. TikTok, I do post it there, yes, but I mainly post things in Italian. I mean, I also do, for example, flip through of my reading journal and bullet journal and they are just with uh, a background music, I'm not speaking, so that for sure doesn't make any difference. But for all the other TikToks in which I'm talking about books, uh, I do that in Italian. So if you want to go and follow me there, just so you know, I talk a lot in Italian. 
Then I've created another spread with a pocket and this is because this spread is for all the ideas I have for my social media, so Instagram, YouTube and TikTok. I had the plan to do this page, yes, but I was like, how much space I'm gonna need, I don't know. So I've decided to create a little pocket in which uh, I have uh, a page for each single social media. Then I'm gonna be able to add more in case I run out of space here. And basically this is uh, what I'm gonna do here. For example, I have an idea for a uh, content that would be perfect for YouTube, so a video. I'm just gonna write here my idea. Same for Instagram and TikTok. At first I was like, uh, I could just have an empty page for ideas, but then I was like, okay, but maybe also knowing where I would love to post it. Because for example, a video like the one that I'm doing a, a long flip through in which I'm talking a lot, it's definitely not made for Instagram or TikTok. So I wanted a, a way to have a place where I can write my ideas, but according to where would this one work the best. So this is why it was born. And yes, I've been loving pockets this year, especially I think I've been putting them a little bit everywhere. Then there is one more spread for YouTube, and this is to keep track of the videos that I've actually posted on YouTube. It's extremely simple, I've tried this out uh, last year, and uh, the plan is uh, this one. Just like last year, I've put all the months here, and these are the same stickers that I've used for my Hilly at a Glance. And uh, underneath each single month, I'm gonna write the title of the videos that I've uploaded extremely simple. I don't know, maybe I'm gonna also write uh, the date this year. This is extremely simple, but in this way I'm gonna be able to see which videos I've posted in each single month and it's perfect. Then it's time for, if we want to call it the second part of my bullet journal, which is all about mental health, basically. The first spread is anxiety tracker. This year, I found out that I'm not just an extremely shy person, but that I'm dealing with social anxiety. It's not easy, first of all, because I live in a country in which mental health is a topic that is just like you don't have to talk about it. You just don't. Thank God the newer generations are trying to change that, are speaking up way more about it, and I'm certainly happy because it's extremely important. And second of all, because social anxiety is definitely something that uh, change and shape your life, uh, whether you like it or not. This year, I wanted to do something more about it, uh, since uh, I found out about it just in 2023 and it wasn't an easy year. What I want to do is, first of all, keep track of my anxiety. So, I have a big spread. There are the 12 months and all days. How this is gonna work, if I'm gonna have an anxiety, I'm gonna be able to color the day. But as you can see, there is enough space, so there are four different uh, little squares, if you want to call it this way, four dots, for each single day. And this is because uh, I can color it if I have anxiety, I can write whether I have therapy or not, I can write, uh, let's say, some small notes. For example, if during therapy I've done something particular or not, it's extremely important for me to keep track of this and I don't know if it's gonna work or not uh, because sometimes uh, you literally live with anxiety 24 hours a day. It's not easy to realize it because I've never named it, you know, but I wanted to give it a try and to see if this is gonna help me and see if uh, for example, straight after therapy, I'm gonna be more free from anxiety for a few days or not. See if some things are connected or not. So this is just something I'm trying out this year and I don't know how it's gonna end up, if it's gonna be helpful or not, but I wanted to give it a try, so here it is. And then there is this spread which uh, looks empty and it's uh, a letter for each single month. I am thinking of adding four pockets here, I still am not so sure, so this is why it's still, let's say, empty. And uh, it's gonna be like uh, this, every single month, at the end of the month, I'm gonna write a letter for myself and put it here. So there's gonna be 12 letters, if I'm gonna create the pockets, since I have one, two, three, four pages, 
I'm gonna put three letters in each single pocket. Why doing it? First of all, inside of them, I'm gonna talk especially about the good things, positive stuff that happened throughout the month. The reason why is because usually at the end of the year, the week between Christmas and New Year's Eve, it's the worst one. I've been having this problem for years, but I've realized it just this past year that it was connected with social anxiety the most. And during that week, I usually start to say, look back at the wall here. And I always turn down myself because I'm like, uh, I see all the negative stuff. I don't see anything positive. My brain just doesn't want to. And so I start feeling like uh, it was a bad year. I've done nothing. I haven't complained this or that. I feel extremely bad. And so I thought maybe if during these days I'll be able to look back and take these letters and read them, I'm gonna be like, hey, you know what? My brain is trying to tell me it was the worst year. I had only bad experiences and nothing good happened. But look at this. I'm the one that wrote it. I've said that in general it is all the things happened. Why am I forgetting about them? It's literally something to have my mental health at the end of the year. So we're gonna see if this is gonna work or not. Then it's time for my solo date time and solo date ideas. As I was saying, social anxiety is not uh, a wonderful thing to have. It's hard. It makes you feel like you want to have a social life, of course, but at the same time, social anxiety stops you from having it, stops you from doing several things, actually a lot of things. And most of all, you end up realizing that uh, your friendship group isn't that big. You don't have so many friends and uh, it's easier a lot of time for you to feel lonely and alone. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know what, uh, instead of going crazy and feel bad about that idea of uh, I'll always be alone, I don't know if it makes sense, but anxiety doesn't make you see a good future ahead of you, that's how it works. I was thinking, you know what, uh, it's important to also do something to feel good with yourself. So even if, uh, like uh, when my brain is gonna be like, you know, you'll end up alone, you will have no friends, nothing at all. I will be able to say, you know, maybe that's true, but I'm fine with my own self. I love myself, I'm good with my own self. And so I was like, I have to learn to love myself a little bit more. So the idea is to bring myself out on solo dates or to spend time that it's important for me with my own self. And this is why I was thinking about putting it here. My goal for the year, if you want to call it a goal, is to go on a solo date at least once a month. I know for some people it's stupid, for somebody with social anxiety it's not that easy. And uh, this page is where I can write a few solo date ideas. And here I have 12 squares, one for each single month. And underneath January I'm just gonna write what I've done. I know this seems big, but the thing is that maybe one month I'm gonna be able to do two things and I'm gonna write them both. This is uh, what I'm gonna use these two pages for. There's also something else uh, connected with it, which is self-care bingo, always about my mental health. It's also for your physical health sometimes, but in my situation it was mainly to take care of myself, especially for my mental health. In this case, this bingo is gonna work like this. I have 12 different squares and I'm gonna come out with 12 different ideas. And here I have, uh, no, not 12, sorry, nine. And here I have uh, the 12 months with 12 little squares. What I'm gonna do is, here I'm gonna be able to write all the nine ideas. And here I'm gonna color each single month uh, with a different color. For example, Self-care bingo. Here there is one thing that could work amazingly. Also has a solo date, something you go do on yourself. You try to be in the present, to relax and not overthink. Like you do it also to shut your mind, if it makes sense. Could be, for example, going for something like a, a long face treatment. Could be a cleaning, a long mask, whatever. 
In that case, you're taking care of yourself, of your skin, you're trying to be present. That could work both as a self-care bingo, but also as a solo date. It's not like you're going to do it with friends. It's not like you're going to do... You could do it also, for example, with uh, getting your nails done. It could be a perfect solo idea if usually you go with somebody else. You could do it once on your own. Self-care bingo, I still have to write my ideas here. For example, to connect it with my previously spread, which was uh, going for a walk, a long one, could be also something for self-care bingo because first of all, walking is always good for your mind and body. You're gonna spend time outside in the fresh air and there's gonna be the sun, all important things for your mind and body. So I could decide to put it also in my self-care bingo. So I'm gonna go right here, go for a long walk or a hike or whatsoever. Let's suppose that I'm gonna do it in January. I'm gonna color one little square underneath it with the color of January. I'm not gonna color or check the wall thing because the, I thought I can use it as a bingo but at the same time as a tracker. So if for example, there's gonna be one thing that has seven colors underneath, it means that I've done it for seven months. Then I have my books can help you. I'm a big reader, but I don't read a lot of nonfiction. I just don't. But I thought that maybe since uh, last year, I was like, I want to read at least one and uh, I've read two. Wow, what a big thing. Let's move on. The point is that there are a lot of books that can actually help you, whether you're struggling with uh, something about your mental health or other stuff, there are always wonderful books. My plan here is uh, to put the books that I've actually read. You could also use the same spread by putting here some books that you've seen online or you've heard of that you think could help you and just put them here and be like, okay, I have an idea of what I could read. That could work. But then I thought, you know what, I just want to put the ones that I've actually read. And what I'm going to do is print the color of the book and put it here and that's it. It's extremely simple. There are a lot of books which are non-fiction that can help you grow and uh, this is why I thought it was a nice idea. Again, I don't know how it's gonna work, if it's gonna work or not. Then uh, I have uh, this page which uh, you basically haven't been seeing me creating in my plan with me video because my phone died, is my goals page and uh, I've created again two pockets and I've decided to divide my goals according to different, let's say, section of life if you want to call it this way probably section is not the right word but it's not coming in my mind right now in english so i'm sorry these are for example i have relationships physical health personal growth mental health financial work and social media there are some goals which uh, are more in let's say i've tried to put goals which depended on me for example, I see people that when they put themselves a goal for social media, they put, for example, reaching this amount of followers on Instagram. I don't like to do that because uh, that is not something that depends fully on me. Like, uh, first of all, I don't want to, I don't want to only think about numbers, but most of all, I think that uh, in case of social media for me, it was more important to be, for example, I put uh, posting more on TikTok because... Uh, Last year, I was posting a few reviews here and there, but not about all the books. And I was like, you know what, you could do something more, not only posting a few reviews here and there or some small flip through whenever the month is over, you could do something more. Another thing I want to do is definitely be more active on Instagram, but not about posting. I'm talking about talking with others. One important thing that you're going to see as a big change if you're following me on Instagram is that things are going to change. I've said this, that once I'll be done posting everything from 2023 because I'm extremely behind my schedule, I know it. I actually had a few months in which I needed a break. Is actually to stop trying to have the perfect fit. It's out of my mind. But for example, I hate the idea of, I don't know, posting about bullet journal and then mixing something that's not connected or is pointless or something like that. This year I'm gonna change a lot and uh, some big changes are gonna happen. One of them is you're gonna see definitely more books 
I'm not giving up my journals at all, but on Instagram, you're gonna see more books. I'm not gonna talk about all my goals because there are quite a lot, but I took social media to make you an example. Then there are other which are really different. So this is what I've created for 2024 and how my spreads are gonna work. I know there are quite a few spreads, but since uh, I created them uh, for my Healy pages, it's not a problem for me because uh, I was like, you know, it's not like I have to recreate them each single month. I just love the idea of having uh, this uh, new thing of all the Healy pages in the same notebook. And uh, I also really like this part from this spread on about my bullet journal where it's more focused uh, on my mental health uh, because I feel like 2024 has to be a completely different year for me and I'm really hoping that's gonna be definitely a better one. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've liked it, remember to give it a thumb up and to subscribe for more videos like this one. Let me know with a comment uh, which spreads you've put in your Healy pages. As always, thank you so much for your support. See you next time. Bye!